This has raised no objection from the landscape, uh, land drainage consultants. Concerns have been raised by local residents with regards to the potential for increased surface water runoff from the site onto the road to the north, which could have impact on properties to the north as they are located downhill. However, detailed discussions have taken place with land drainage consultants and submission of drainage strategy subject to commission conditions. They are satisfied that the infiltration basin will provide prevent any surface water from any runoff leaving the site. Next slide, please. This photo into the site uh, from the roadside and the access gateway. Uh, the bottom was also a photo of the wider field towards the east beyond the site. Query, queries were raised on the visit regarding the impact of achieving visibility space. To do so, one metre of hedgerow is to be removed from either side of the existing access. However, an additional three metres of hedgerow is introduced as it extends into the site. Further to this, 324 metres of hedgerow, vegetation and trees are proposed across the site as a whole. Next slide, please. Here we have a photo looking west across the site and another photo looking to the rear of the site with the woodland boundary. Next slide, please. The top photo is looking south across the site to the boundary hedgerow adjacent to the road. The bottom photo looking back towards the access and the northeast of the site. The dwelling that can be seen is of the Athens, uh, Old Hills. This is the only property that overlooks the field directly. As noted on the site yesterday and visible in the image, the tunnel that was created from land to the west of the site. Um, and the kilns themselves underneath this will be unaffected by the development with contaminated land condition to include it to secure investigative, investigative works with regards to the previous quarry. To conclude, the site is considered to be directly adjacent to the main built up form of Howell Hill and indeed is adjacent to the proposed settlement boundary set out in Regulation 16 Draft NDP. The proposal at this stage is in outline form with all the matters reserved and it's considered that with sensitive siting, design and landscaping, which would be agreed at the new matters stage, the three dwellings would fit comfortably within the landscape. There have been no technical objection raised to the scheme. The proposal is in accordance with the MPPF and core strategy policies and is therefore recommended for approval subject to the recommended conditions. Thank you. I now invite Ms. Mrs. Akers of Walford Parish Council to speak. You have three minutes. The Walford NDP establishes several settlement boundaries within Walford Parish. Three of those settlement boundaries are located on Howell Hill. The site of this application sits in an open field outside of any of these three Howell Hill settlement boundaries. The Walford NDP is currently at Regulation 16 stage, which ends on 31st of August. It is noted that material consideration has been given to Regulation 14 stage of our NDP in determining other recent local planning applications, including the pavilion in the field next to the nursery. I ask that the committee take notice that this application is outside of our proposed settlement brand boundaries. The application first came before Walford Parish Council at its meeting on 17th of February 21, five dwellings, and again at the meeting on 21st of July 21, three mm -hmm. dwellings. The application was carefully considered by the council at each of these meetings, and in both cases, Walford Parish Council voted to object to the application. There was strong local opposition on both occasions from residents. The reasons for these objections have been submitted to Herefordshire Council and are available on the website. I'd like to restate those reasons again. <coughs> Howell Hill is a hamlet comprising several small clusters of dwellings separated by open fields, collectively defined as the forest small holdings landscape type. This proposed development would represent a density and visual appearance that would be completely out of keeping with the area. The services and amenities that originally qualified Howell Hill as a settlement, for example, the pub and the church, no longer exist. Therefore, this site would not be a sustainable development, which is contrary to core strategy policies SS1 and RA2. The proposed site is not in a sustainable location, with access to Howell Hill via very steep, unlit, narrow and winding country lanes. Church Lane itself, located off Howell Hill Road, is a very narrow, dead-end, single-track lane with no pavements or verges and struggles to cope with the current levels of traffic, including horse riders, cyclists and walkers. 
There is no public transport provision on Howell Hill, meaning the development is not sustainable, which is contrary to policies SS1 and RA2. The siting and urban style of the houses being proposed is not in keeping with the existing character of the hamlet, which is contrary to core strategy policy RA2. There would be significant increase in light pollution arising from these dwellings. I would like to restate that this application has been carefully considered twice by Walford Parish Council, and the Council voted to object to the application on both occasions. Herefordshire Council has shown it has sufficient housing land available, available for just over six years, so this development is not needed. Thank you. Thank you. Just in time. Thank you. And now I, I invite uh, Mr. Kendrick to speak on behalf of the local res residents. Um, thank you very much for um, <clears throat> enabling me to speak to the uh, committee. Um, I act on behalf of a substantial group of local objectors to the proposal, and I emphasize local. The planning officer's report asks more questions than it answers. There's clearly been a slanting and changing within the year report to support the applicant rather than the traditional independence and to its conclusions, particularly with regard to vital elements of conditions, which I'll come to at the end of my brief submission. This is land in the open countryside. This committee have spent four decades to my personal knowledge resisting applications in the open countryside that's what it is there is selective avoidance and um, an, and an ambiguous description of the pre-application advice that the applicant has received what has the applicant been told has the applicant been encouraged to submit an application in open countryside If we look at the application again, there's no true indication of mass or scale in what appears to be an attempt to secure a form of residential consent at any cost by any manoeuvre. Three dwellings to uh, five dwellings to uh, five dwellings to three, change in position, change in location, change in size. There's clear evidence that the road network adjoining the site cannot cope with the proposal. Many members, I'm sure, discovered that on the site visit. <coughs> the longevity and tenacity of opposition um, to the proposal um, has led, basically, to the creation of the neighbourhood plan. You as a committee and as a council are encouraging local authorities to identify sites that should be developed for residential and other purposes within their neighbourhood plan. The council is acting entirely in accordance with your advice. This is the wrong type of application on the wrong site in the wrong application. There's no need for further housing to be provided in completely isolated and unsustainable locations on the basis the council has well exceeded its housing land requirements. The committee I'm asking should continue to facilitate housing development in accordance with national planning policy framework, which of course is sustainable development. This development is not sustainable and in accordance with their emerging local plan, again on sustainability, and they should give considerable weight to the voice of the local community and their emerging name on plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kendrick. You were about 10 seconds over um, discussion. Thank you. If you can now take your seats back in the main room. Right. Now we come to the ward member. Councillor William Wilding is acting as a proxy for the ward member, Councillor Yolandi Watson, for the site. Mm -hmm. He speaks first and then has the, has the right to speak at the end of the debate. He does not have a vote. Ten minutes time. Um, thank you, Chair. 
Um, and th thank you to all the members who came to the site visit yesterday. I don't intend to repeat a lot of what I said yesterday. Well, I will just run through the main points. The site is not sustainable. There's no bus service, no pub, no shops, no village hall. The roads are small with no passing places. Construction traffic would be a nightmare. There are too many vehicles using the roads already. There are no passing places or turning circles. The parish council had to put an unsuitable for HGV signs because of damage to residents' property. And the members who were there will remember me pointing out there was a crack in one of the residents' walls where a, an HGV had uh, reversed into it trying to turn around. How Hill is not a village. It's just a scattering of houses. It has already surpassed the 14% growth target. Herefordshire, as pointed out, has achieved a six-year housing land supply. The NPPF seeks to restrict development in isolated locations. Will this application open the door to more applications? The area is rich in wildlife, which will be displaced. The woodland above the site has a lot of wildlife in it, and that wildlife will be disturbed by this development. The water runoff from the site and surrounding hill is already a major problem for residents further down the hill, and building more houses will only exacerbate that problem. Runoff from the fields goes into the roads and into residents' properties. The mitigating measures are for the new builds and won't affect existing residents, won't help them rather. The council's drainage officer acknowledges that water comes from the top of the hill. And a map shows there is a spring above the site. The field presently acts as a natural flood defense and slows that water down. You saw from the massive turnout of protesters that there are problems and they're real and considered of the utmost importance by the local residents. How often do you see that level of protest at a site visit? Our present core strategy says we should balance environmental issues with economic and social needs to ensure that development is sustainable and does not cause irreversible harm. It says we must meet the challenge of climate change. Policy SS1 asks for a presumption in favor of sustainable development. That's fine, but this is not sustainable because the impacts of granting permission would significantly outweigh the benefits. Our core strategy objectives, including providing affordable housing, that's not what's gonna be built here. We are asked to ensure new developments positively contribute towards better access to education and health facilities. That will not be possible here. It says we should aim to reduce the need for travel and lessen the harmful impacts from increased traffic. This development will not do that. Policy SS4, new development should be located to minimize impacts on the transport network. Policy SS6, development should conserve and enhance those environmental assets that contribute towards the county's distinctiveness. Around this area, that means beautiful open countryside bordering very closely bordering the AONB. And also it means species rich hedgerows, one of which will be ruined to create a view for drivers. The officer's report says one meter will need to be removed. I think anyone standing at that entrance will tell you the road is very small, the hedge is right up to the road. How can it only need one meter removed? To, to make a splay. It's gonna need a lot more than that. 
Proposals should maintain and improve the effectiveness of the ecosystems essential to the health and well-being of the country's re county's residents. While well, climate change will seriously affect our residents, they will suffer floods, droughts, heat waves, which can kill vulnerable people, and all manner of problems unknown at present, caused by mass extinctions, mass migrations in the years to come. The local plan says tackling climate change in Herefordshire will be a difficult challenge. Well, that's true if councillors who voted to declare a climate emergency don't take decisions that address that challenge. That's definitely true if our planning department sticks to an outdated interpretation of what is sustainable. Policy SS7 seeks to reduce the need to travel by private car and encourages sustainable travel options. Can't be done here. Policy RA1 says that development should be proportionate to the size of the community. This community is 55 scattered houses already, and it already has a large addition planned at the former Howell Hill Nursery. So any more is not proportionate. Finally, the NDP. While it's not passed, it's at a very advanced stage. And the parish council have put a lot of thought and experience into it. This site is outside of the NDP area, and it, as you've heard, is not supported by the parish council. Why has the planning department not given the NDP more weight? Because to ask local people to put so much time and energy into making an NDP and then to take no notice of it, not to give it enough weight, is to my mind wrong. So to sum up, there's two big elephants in this room. The site is unsustainable. Building on it will only add to our climate change and biodiversity problems. The roads are too small and the introduction of further traffic is unacceptable. The site is a sponge that already helps mitigate the local water runoff. The field is a buffer between people and nature. So building on it will disturb natural habitats and it will also condemn residents further down the hill to more flooding misery. What's proposed while we accept there is a climate and ecological emergency, is that we vote to make it worse. There, this is an outline planning application, and as such, the planning committee are being asked a simple question, is this site a good place to build? Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Right. We now move to the debate. I'm looking for speakers. Councillor Norman. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll start by saying how useful I think the site visit was. Um, they're not always, you feel, well, why bother? But in this case, I think being there really did bring home to me um, how very unsuitable this spot is. Very narrow roads, as we've heard, incredibly narrow roads um, and a site that is that has a huge amount of value ecologically and environmentally. Um, I think the uh, Councillor Wilding has made some very valid points and I agree with pretty well all of them in fact so I won't repeat them in detail but just to focus on the fact that just being there we all um, were aware of the narrowness of the road. A surprising number of cars using that road because of course there is no alternative at all um, and this sort of development will add to that and the problems that it generates. Um, we were made aware of the problems of flooding, the fact that this is on a slope and that there is a regular issue with flooding. Um, and that is very difficult as things are to, um, to, 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 to deal with. But in fact, adding infrastructure, as we've heard, to build homes on land, which is at least in part absorbing some of that water is going to make it a great deal worse, I would have thought. That seems pretty clear to me. Uh, the fact that there's no services whatsoever uh, in this area also makes it completely unsustainable. And I, I really don't know why we're even looking at this, given all the issues that we've been considering and 
debating and discussing for a number of years now. It seems to me really quite extraordinary that it's even on our agenda. Um, I just also wanted to draw attention to the point made, uh, point 4.5, point um, and ecology. And it's always unclear quite whether there's an objection or whether it's been superseded by comments, but there is a clear comment here uh, that at this time, due to legal and scientific uncertainty and phosphate neutrality not secured, there is ident an identified adverse effect on the integrity of the river. Why? Special area conservation. Now, I don't know where we are, but I feel it's important we ask that question virtually with any application which comes to us. Can we be assured that, that, uh, that we are not adding to a problem that we're already very aware of? And as I asked in the previous uh, application, can we be absolutely assured that there'd be no, no addition to the nutrient impact in this case on the lug and i'm not sure we can be but i'll put that out there as a question but i just finally come back to the point oh final point sorry that i'd like to make is about the ngp as has been said we we expect volunteers to put huge amounts of time and effort into developing these plans and then all too often we're not prepared to note points that are made in them strongly opposed by the parish council and most residents we gather the 14 percent growth has already been achieved so it's not actually necessary um, there are many points i think i've probably can i emphasize so, them. Mm -hmm. thank you very much i think i've made the main ones i wanted to make thank you councillor andrews thank you chairman i, I must agree with councillor norman the value of the site visit here uh, many of the points have already been raised, but I say it is totally unsustainable. But one, one, uh, one comment I would make on the return journey, expertly, expertly driven as I was by Councillor Roan, we noted that the pedestrians had to leap into the hedges for the car to get past. So, so absolutely no room otherwise. But I would point out, I understand in 4.9, this is a form of quarry. What's underneath the, the rather nice grass surface, I ask? Because in my experience, quarries that have been filled in tend to be repositories of all sorts of peculiar substances. So how safe is it even to dig this, this up? this is open countryside it must be uh, really i find it absolutely amazing that this application is even in front of us i would just like to share my experience yesterday i found as the other councillors have mentioned a very very important to visit sites um I, my experience was i had to reverse you know along that very narrow road and there were some people with their little dogs and they you know i didn't know where i was going to be reversing to and they were trying to go into the hedge i just thought you know if lorries are coming down this road as well i just felt it was totally unsustainable my comments thank you Councilor we done our site visit not yesterday but um, 150 or plus years ago uh oh, i'm, I'm sure you were there <laughs> <laughs> in some respects uh, <coughs> intellectually i'm very often 150 years behind everybody else <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we would have seen a, a busy landscape this this as as uh council andrews observed is a quarry site um, and indeed, the, the case officer referenced in her presentation a, uh, a lime kiln to the west, um, a clam kiln. Uh, and, and indeed, the, the site name gives it away as old, old lime old kilns. It's uh, an LD4 comment, really. And I'm sorry that we don't appear to have considered LD4 or the LD4 from the historic landscape in view of the fact that um, this is a site recorded on uh, Heritage Council's historic um, landscape. Uh, historic environment record that's number four zero two seven four zero two seven two so it's a material consideration in planning and uh roughly half the site is under a quarry roughly about nearly half the site up to the to, to, to the west was quarried and to the east no i got that the wrong way around to the east was not quarried to the west to the east was 
Sorry, to the west wasn't, I think. That's the right way around. Um, and um, in, uh, in the 19th century, the quarry site had a little railway through it, believe it or not, according to the early map evidence. It was a, a probably a primitive plate, flanged plate tramway uh, taking stone from the quarry place to, to lime kilns. And uh, an intriguing place with um, very good walkable neighborhood connections to a church and a pub and a meeting room and a Sunday school and uh, a whole host of facilities, all of which we've lost. So 150 years ago, this, this little community, you could genuinely say was a self-sustaining place. Alas, it is no more. Um, and so my, my little essay into the um, historic landscape, educational though it, though it, though it is, doesn't, um, uh, uh, alas give us any support for, for this application because clearly as other members have observed we are we are where we are and uh, this 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 application uh, cannot be supported without uh, without a very car dependent approach to development um and as as the board member proxy has observed uh, that that conflicts with our climate change Policy undertaking, so I'm afraid I'm not able to support this. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Captain. I think we need uh, that we should be grateful if you've been around in 150 years. <coughs> Corey might have got planning permission anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any other speakers? There are none. Go on, then. We have a, a, a council room. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've, I've said it before at uh, my <laughs> when you stand there, uh, how far have I got to walk to find a pub, buy a pint of milk, get a pack of the smokes, a newspaper? And you also got to take into consideration when you walk from that particular site, what sort of gradient have you got to deal with? So let's step in at how far will I have to cycle to get all those aforementioned? How far would I have to cycle with a five-year-old to get education, an 11 year old to get slightly higher education? <coughs> now, if you have all that together, <coughs> the part of it is uh, outline planning. So therefore, we don't have any real concept of what is going to be the next stage and what's going to come forward. Uh, and, and I take um, uh, an awful lot of notice of what the, uh, the proxy board member has said about sustainability and the decision we made in March 2019 and subsequently about um, the challenges that this county and the, and the whole world face. Um, so with regard to the, the very good officer report and all, all that was contained within, it all boils down to is this a sustainable site? And for me, it's not. It, it really, really isn't. Um, even the walking and cycling mud trip, it, it, it's not sustainable. Uh, highways report, however, does point out that it that it is. You know, it, it's it's how Herefordians get about in their little four wheel independent vehicle. Um, so I, I'm. I'm really struggling here to, to nod this one through and listening to my extremely experienced, and there's a lot of experience sat in this committee. I, I, I'm struggling to see that we could, we could go with this. Um, is it an open countryside, Council Andrews? Well, there's one or two sparsely placed houses there which are very old. But um, I, I think I'm going to have to go with. The, uh, the the great minds that sit on this committee and um, be uh, and, and go against officer recommendation on this one. Thank you, Councillor Brown. <coughs> now, bearing in mind, I, I'm sorry I arrived rather late to the particular meeting, but I have to say, I have to say, and I realise that we have some difficulty here with the. With planning policy matters if members as it appears to be are minded to refuse this we have to be careful and think this through very carefully so i have to say from my point of view i don't recall ever going to a site where the road infrastructure was as bad as this particular site um 
I, I, I mean, thinking back, and I, I cannot remember one quite like this, quite like this. Uh, and we just have some bad ones ever. But anyway, perhaps I will ask our officers about if you can give some guidance as far as the planning policy issues are concerned, mindful of the fact that we have to form the Jane, just and I did ask a question, um, and I wondered perhaps if uh, Mr. Bishop is going to speak, he could incorporate some sort of response to that. That was about this this point about the adverse effect on the on the Y, essentially. Now, I'll answer that straight away, Chairman. I would hope you, you would have confidence in your officers when they were um, when they put the uh, papers before you. The uh, ecologist at the end of the comment clearly identifies no objections. Uh, and that is the uh, that is the comment from the ecologist, and it's not on the river Lug, it's the river Y. Why, absolutely? Yeah. No, I did. No, you mentioned the Lug. Oh, sorry, Polly. Uh, so, it was only in the subsequent. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. She did the first. Yeah. But, yeah. If I could just go on to uh, other matters, um, reading application here is here before you because it was redirected to committee. That's why it is here. Um, so that answers that that particular question. Um, Officers have to recommend on applications which in accordance with the development plan for the area. The development plan is the core strategy. That is the, uh, that together with the MPPF is where we must make recommendations on applications. How Hill is identified within your core strategy as an area where for a proportionate growth. I would refer to an appeal um, elsewhere on Hell Hill, where an application was refused for housing development, where the inspector found that um, the, the area was suitable for proportionate growth. That appeal was allowed. Housing numbers, how the Walford Parish have not reached its housing big target for the area, which, is, as you know, is a minimum. It's quoted in 6.31 uh, of your report. They have, there's a requirement for 91 houses between 2011 and 2031, uh, 14 completions and 39 commitments as of um, April 21. Since then has been a further a nine approved since April. So they are still 29, 29 dwellings short of the, the uh, target. <coughs> Uh, the minimum target, which is identified for Wolford. Yes, we have a 6.19 year supply of affordable uh, of, of, of housing. However, that figure drops away. The housing house numbers drop drop off the end once they're completed. If you don't keep putting new permissions into the pot, you will vastly move down towards a figure which is below five years. And you will all be aware of the issues when we haven't got a five-year housing land supply, where uh, limited or no um, uh, consideration can be given to um, NDPs, which are then considered out of date if um, they are they haven't got any any uh, allocations and they're over two years old. So even when they've got allocations, if they're over two years old, they those policies are considered out of date. Your core strategy in RA2, as I say, identifies the developments within and adjacent to settlements are supported, are in accordance with that policy. You've identified that Howell Hill has a neighbourhood, or the, the parish of the neighbourhood plan, which is at Regulation 16, is a, a consultation on Regulation 16, which will finish on the 31st of August. There are, I understand there have already been representations regarding the settlement boundary. So an inspector will or examiner will review all, all of will review the plan, will review the submissions made, and will consider whether to uh, amend, recommend amendments to the, 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 the plan or not. So at the present time, we have to therefore give it limited weight. And so we give it limited weight in terms of the NDP. The, fall, the fallback is that the core strategy, which is an adopted core strategy, holds, holds the, the greater weight, and therefore you assess the application under RA2. The site is, is adjacent to, three sides of the site are adjacent to the settlement boundary. So 
the officers quite rightly therefore concurred that it's, it's, it's compliant with RA2 and therefore have recommended approval for it. You have the comments from the highway highways officer raising no objections. Yes, I note, I note the lanes, <coughs> the lanes are narrow. Um, I used to cover that area myself as a as a, a plane officer many, many years ago. So I, I know the, the, the nature of the lanes. But that's not that's no different to a lot of other areas within our county. And I would direct you to the last site visit you made for the last meeting, where you went to Long Town, where you would have traveled up very similar, very similar lanes to go there as well. Okay. So in that respect, there are the issues you are raising are clearly covered in the in the officer's report, clearly covered by the core strategy. And I would ask you to, to consider all those aspects in your consideration of the application. Thank you. If I can just add to support Mr. Bishop's view on this, um, I've heard a lot of what's been said about the MDP and the weight that should be attached to it. And I understand from a local perspective that that is the case. I'm also aware, having done a number of planning appeals, if you're simply at Reg 16 stage, which you are, or are about to get to that on the 31st of August, <laughs> at this point, an inspector will attach very little weight to that plan at this stage. That's simply a matter of fact, and that's why your planning officers are doing the right thing in not attaching a significant weight to it, because if they were to do that, that would be disingenuous if this was appealed, and then it was overturned. It, it would be simply nonsense. See, one has to follow the line through. Now, um, one would hope that the process will go through and it will go towards adoption and the uh, referendum, etc., will all be favourable. But at this stage, you cannot attach significant weight to it. And therefore, you must treat that area with extreme caution. Um, I've heard a lot about sustainability, and there are provisions in the uh, Herefordshire plan on sustainability, that might be a safer route for you to look at. But I, I think to attach much weight to the NDP at this stage, um, I would um, counsel caution against doing that. Right, any other speakers? We have no proposal on the table. I just ask for members to make a proposal. All right, I'll, <clears throat> I will propose that we, we refuse this application on the grounds of its unsustainability, that it is entirely reliant on, on public, on the private transport, and that I, as the Proxy Ward member has said, we are in the midst of a climate emergency and the, therefore the developments that are entirely reliant on public private transport should not be encouraged. And I would be grateful if the planning officers now could uh, perhaps help me on this one for more. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bishop. Uh, Chairman, um, Whilst my learning colleague here has, uh, has mentioned sustainability and the, the, the uh, members brought that up, I would caution against that. How will Hill is identified within your core strategy as an area for appropriate uh, um, growth? Uh, and that has been, and that issue has been tested at appeal relatively recently. That uh, was, I understand, that was the nursery, was it not? It was the nursery, Mr. sorry. Bishop. Well, that is, that is, the nursery is actually on what passes for the main road in Howell Hill. This is not, this, this lane could be no, no um, by no means, uh, even a, a main road is extremely <coughs> narrow, one of the narrowest ones I've ever driven down. And remember, I've been on loads of site visits in this county. I mean, pedestrian safety is impossible. People what have are, to leap into a hedge. With respect, thanks, Andrews, what we're referring to there are highway objections, not sustainability objections. Well, I'll put the, 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 the sustainability the objections were clearly considered by the inspector in the appeal, which was 
dated uh, the 2nd of September 2021. I know, I know. Um, and uh, I, I would caution, I would caution against that. If if members, and so if members are minded uh, to to uh, refuse the application, what you should what you should be looking at is in your planning balance, you you giving greater weight to the NDP settlement boundary on the Wolford Wolford uh, um, the Wolford policy twenty, which identifies the settlement boundary for Howell Hill, and that is the area where you should be um, looking towards. Um, it, it, as I say, officers have assessed that the um, quite rightly that it's that it's limited weight. But if you if you as members of the committee feel that that has that's the that's the area where you should be looking to frame your refusal reason. Thank you. And, and Chairman, if I may, just to clarify my point, and, and I'm grateful that Mr. Bishop has pointed out those comments you were making, Councillor, were in relation to highways. Um, I think you've got a difficulty there in terms of whether you've got support from highways on that. But, but when I was talking about sustainability, I was talking about the wider sustainability issues. I think Councillor Norman referred to some of those where you're looking at the ecology, you're looking at the um, facilities within how Hill and et cetera. Those may help you a bit more. I'm not, I'm not advocating that you pursue no, they that. Won't. They, won't. They, they won't. They won't because those have been dealt with previously as well. Yeah. Uh, the, the key issue is the, the, the area is identified for for proportionate growth uh, within within uh, Howell Hill, and to some extent, the the, the NDP identifies that as well because it's identified uh, areas um, where development can take place within the settlement boundary. Yeah, but, but that that is subject to review. And if it, you know, we could be if you do refuse the application, we could be in a scenario come an appeal. We don't offer any any defence to the appeal. Mm -hmm. Purely and simply because the inspector has included the site. Now that's that's an assumption, but that could well be the and case. We, and we would then potentially the have, <laughs> have a claim for costs against the council. Mm -hmm. Councillor Harvey. Right. Um, with regards to the previous appeal on, on a different site, um, am I correct in uh, believing that the five year land supply? Um, wasn't um, actually in place at the time. Was it relevant? Uh, yeah. Um, the decision was um, the decision was September twenty one. So we had a five year set. Uh, we had a supply of a supply then. We did. Okay. Council Norman. Thank you. We finished. I think so. At the moment. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I well, two things. One is I'm happy to second the proposal, um, but the other thing is really, and, and I appreciate we're, we're looking for ways to get this right, if that's where we're going, so <laughs> thank you for your help. But I, I'm, I'm sure I have been in many planning meetings where we've been advised that what makes an application sustainable is the proximity of schools and pubs and this and that and all the services which are needed. I'm sure that's been part of what's been given to us as a way of convincing us that this is accept yeah. acceptable. Here we have the exact opposite, and I, I'm quite surprised if we can't build that into our, you know, support for a refusal. The lack of all those services is there a way we can do that? Seems can, to be very, can, very relevant. Can I assist? I think Mr. Bishop's going to find the actual paragraph. Um, this has been looked at in the appeal, and how hell has not been found wanting in those those areas. The issue you've got is you, you, you are in a bit of a cleft stick corner, if I can double my analogies, because not only have you got this NDP that's at a, still at a point at which limited weight can be attached to it, you've got a recent planning appeal. And I appreciate and I, I'm very happy for every member to come back at me and say you consider each application on its individual mer merits, and of course you do. But if you've got a plain uh, appeal that's been determined recently in Howell Hill and they have looked at these issues, that is a material consideration. And that does place you in considerable difficulty. Now, you know, I apologise for that. If, if, if that helps, but that's that's the kind of application that comes before your committee. Well, 
thank you. I, I take that point, but I mean, the fact remains that those services are not there and they're not within any sort of reach other than by car, you know, and if that wasn't taken account of by the earlier inspector, then I would ask some questions about why it wasn't, but I, I'm, I'm listening to what you say, but I'm also, you know, pretty convinced that this is a reality yeah, we're facing. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Uh, could I also ask, Chairman, um, um, Ahead, the, there is a very substantial and mature head. They said that I think one metre has got to be removed. Uh, having dri driven in and out of that, I would find that to be a somewhat of an understatement. I think several metres will have to be removed to make an ac that access in any way safe. Surely we have legislation that protects hedges. <clears throat> if I may, Chairman, um, I think. Uh, Councillor Andrews is quite correct in her assumption that more hedge would need to be removed. Um, if you look at the actual draw drawings, um, the drawings in the themselves actually uh, show that uh, more hedge would have to be uh, or be required to be removed. Um, would I be right in assuming that this area of land would be classed as open countryside currently? It's classified as open countryside adjacent, but it is adjacent on three boundaries to the settlement boundary. And I would, uh, as regards to the hedgerow, um, as, as regards to the hedgerow, um, there is uh, over 300 metres of, of new hedgerow to be planted as part of the scheme. Yeah. So, new hedgerow isn't as good as existing hedgerow. Um, yeah. Yeah. It takes 10 years or more to get. Um, exactly. It gets get established. Jeff, can I ask a question? What was the previous site that we're referring to where there was an appeal? Was that a brownfield site? Yes, it, it was, was a nursery. nursery. It was a nursery site, but it, it, it covered all the points about sustainability and the fact <coughs> that the, service, the main service centre is in Walford. Right. Yes. And that's, that, that was identified, and that was identified that, that that would have to be met by car, and that, and, and that was acceptable. Could I ask another question? Would it be um, relevant for the uh, members of this committee to consider that if we did refuse it on the grounds that are being suggested, um, if it was appealed, um, the chances are that the uh, neighbourhood plan would be at Rec 16 by the time it went to appeal? So appeals, appeals are taking around about six, six, six months, six to nine months, depending on the nature of the appeal, which is, uh, is proposed, whether it's a written rep or, or hearing. Um, any change of policy uh, running up to that appeal, the inspector would be advised on. So if the NDP had uh, gone to examination or had progressed further than that, then the inspector would be informed of that. If, if the, uh, uh, there's two ways, if the, if the um, NDP, is maintained in its in its present state as uh, and moves forward to adoption on that basis. The inspector would be informed of that, and obviously this site would then for, therefore be outside the settlement boundary, uh, and, will, and will be contrary to the NDP. And the inspector will, would be um, adv advised accordingly. Uh, and I would hope an appeal would be dismissed. Mm. However, the landowners, I'm sure, will if will be making, of, if they haven't already, will we'll, we'll make um, representations on uh, on the Reg 16 to have to request that land be included within the the settlement boundary, which an, inspect, uh, an examiner will consider. If that is the case, and that goes to that, that particular point, the, the inspector will, will, would be advised accordingly. In that, in, in that scenario, then we'd have to consider the council would have to consider its, its position in terms of defending that appeal. Right. <coughs> Do we have an actual proposal moved and seconded <coughs> with a, a, a clear, clear indication of the reasons for that? Um. Councillor Andrews has proposed, I've seconded, I, I, I appreciate we need some help in getting the wording straight, but I think we still feel, I certainly still feel, that this simply isn't a sustainable uh, site in relation to the services and the 
needs of the community who, would, who are living there and would be living there if we added to it. Could I also comment? It's, it's this is a, uh, an ex quarry, is it not? Has the has okay, I'm just looking at um 4.9 has um any uh can't think of the word any efforts been made to see what's um under, under, underneath the, the grass there? Is it contaminated? The environmental health officer has made his comments that they are aware of that, aware of, of, of the historic nature of the uh, site. That's why they they are content that they put a recommendation for a condition to be imposed in this particular instance. I think the members are looking, you know, my, my advice to members, if they are looking for a reason for refusal, is to utilise the NDP, Wolford uh, 20, uh, Policy 20 as a reason to come forward with. That's what I would encourage you to do. Um, if, if, you, if, you, if you're minded to refuse the application, and I think it should be framed around that, and you can, you can add in the... Um, the sustainability we can add in sustainability to that and the MPPF. I would and suggest you would, you would uh, well that's all incorporated into the fact that it's outside the settlement boundary yeah. uh, and that is that you know but I caution you know yes that that, that is an area that I need to hear from you that, that that's what you want mm -hmm. it refused on and that you consider that the weight a greater weight should be attached to the NDP. Um, and yeah, that which is which is which is contrary to F, which is contrary to our yeah, advice, but that's that's a view to consider. Right. Councillor Rowe. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, I think picking up on what um, both Councillor Andrews and Norman have said, I think that, that, um, it's outside the settlement boundary, even though it's adjacent to their uh, always in local countryside. I think um, Hector Mill uh, was quite accurate with his, with LD4, historic value. Um, I don't know how RA2 sits with it. Um, but for the, uh, the local, um, uh, the local um, categories, uh, Warford 4 and Warford 20, otherwise there's enough there I'd look, I would look to uh, Mr. Bishop. And I've also picked that SS1, but I think that might be a little bit. I think if you major on those two, four, four and 20 would be your key ones. And also added to that, the strength, strengthening with the um, outside of the settlement boundary. So therefore, I mean, that. Yeah. RA2. Yeah. I'm a, Yes, I'm just trying to think that even though it is outside the settlement boundary, it's because it's adjacent on three sides, it can be determined and viewed on either side, side, but it's outside and it's safe and outside. So, therefore, if it's outside, it's an open countryside. So, I, I think that RA2 and LD1 uh, landscape and landscape. LD4 as well for the historic. It's, I would imagine it's hardly ever used, isn't it? No, there's it's no carry that, that relates to the buildings, etc., yeah. and ancient monuments, and etc. And it is not nothing of that nature. You need to find a 17th century kiln underneath one of those. I'm sure the council will be for that. <laughs> the last one I had about it was um, uh, an arsenal from the Napoleonic Wars, oh, well, and that was underground, but we got away with that one. I think just because it's a quarry, I think it's a quarry. I thought we don't know what it's been filled in with. Um, well, that's it. Well, well, the environmental health touch. Mm -hmm. Could we be advised to you, Jack? Could we be advised as whether we think that we've got. And we've got to cover all the possible. So, um, I've got down here that you've uh, Wolford, Wolford 4 and 20 of the N N PPF. Uh, and sorry, NDP policies, um, core strategy policies, LD1 and RA2 uh, will be the key um, the key policies and the MPPF um, that we would that, that you could we could incorporate into a reason for refusal, uh, which we can put in front of uh, the proposed and second and chairman um, if you're happy about. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, I think we. 
a very difficult morning has got even more difficult as the day has got the morning has gone on. Still <laughs> <laughs> <No> afternoon, yeah. <laughs> yeah, afternoon. <laughs> Just anyway, um, do you want any further comments? Only from a planning perspective, Chairman, that the site is considered acceptable for development <laughs> in accordance with the core strategy, in accordance with the development plan, taking into account the, the NDP, which has to be given a limited weight at the present time. But I fully understand where members are coming from. Thank you. To, to use the famous Mandy Rice Davis, he would say that, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, come to Councillor Wilding. <laughs> Um, thank you, Chair, and thank you all members for um, a brilliant debate on this. Uh, there's a lot to be said, and we obviously accept that um, members of the planning committee and uh, legal advice team uh, are trying to help us through this, but the, the, their hands are slightly tied by government regulations which are not enough up to date with the situation in terms of a climate and ecological emergency. So I accept your hands are tied there, but at some point, given that we've declared a climate and ecological emergency, someone has to stand up and be counted. And I think this is one of those occasions. But I just want to go through a few other things, that points that came up. The housing target. Well, Warford in the NDP, Warford have identified other areas for development which they consider to be better than this site. So it's not the case that it's this site or nothing, it's that other places should be pushed through and this site shouldn't. Uh, the housing supply, we accept that that could go down, but again, if Wolford are able to identify other places which they consider better and are more sustainable, then they should be chosen before this one. Um, is it adjacent on three sides to the NDP boundary? No, it's only adjacent on two sides because the third side that you're talking about is actually a side onto part, another part of this field which is yet to be developed and is outside the boundary. So I'll tell you what's going to happen. As soon as you get this one done, they'll go, well, this little bit is only uh, is, is on three sides. So let's just fill that in and hooray, we've completely filled the whole field. When we talk about the previous appeal, it was for Howell Hill Nursery which is a completely different site. The road uh, that uh, the traffic came, comes out on is like a two lane. It's actually quite wide for a country lane. There's plenty of room. I imagine three cars could get side by side on it. So it's in no way anything like the lane that we're talking about. And so I believe it's a totally different uh, situation. And that should, if it goes to appeal, that should be one of the council's arguments as to why the sites are different. Sustainability. It's all down once again to how we interpret sustainability. And how many times have I brought up the fact that sustainability, according to the United Nations and our own government and our own core strategy that we're all so happy to quote, but take no notice of, says that sustainability is about managing the present so that it doesn't have an adverse effect on future generations. Well, you know, if you're going to vote that climate change and ecological emergency are actually happening in front of our eyes as we speak, then how can you pretend that this site is sustainable? It's just not possible. You've got to start saying people can't travel everywhere in cars, so what do we do about that? We don't give everyone a free electric car because 
And that would mean each one of them would have to drive 100,000 miles before it can even pay back its own carbon footprint. What we're suggesting is that our planning department and the government's planning policies start reflecting the actual situation we're living through instead of continuously looking at it and going, oh, well, we can't do it because they say we can't. Well, I would suggest that the council should defend any planning appeal that's made. The council should defend this robustly and see it as a point where we can start changing the way planning is done in this country. Because I believe we're just completely walking into a total nightmare here. And it's about time we started doing something about it. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, you're right to reply. Thank you, Thank you Chairman. Um, the department's been mentioned here. The department has to make recommendations on the development plan policies which are there before you. If we do not, we will have numerous appeals against us. We will lose those appeals. Mm. If the government wants to come forward with immediate uh, policy formation, they can do that. They haven't done that at the present time. So uh, the officers within my team have to come forward to you with sound, reasoned recommendations. That's what they've done. That's what they will continue to do. They will make the change when the new local plan comes forward. That is the time a change will be made. Thank you. Can I also remind me, it's all very well to talk of making a stand. Bear in mind, you make a stand. Making a stand when it's the taxpayers who are going to pay is, is one thing. If you're prepared to put up and underwrite the particular stand with your home and property, then we're up to you. I think uh, that won't happen. Right, we've had a proposal and a seconder. Can I ask those in favour, please? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is carried, I believe, unanimously. No, 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 no. So, it was against. Oh, so, against. Any abstentions? Any abstentions? Yeah. One, one abstention. <coughs> then that is carried. Thank you all for your attendance and your patience with uh, <laughs> you know, a difficult meeting for.